turns out we were right. Nvidia was just waiting for AMD to announce the RX 9070 price so that they could play the same, same, but different, but still same game. Both cards just dropped and we're gonna talk about them. Nvidia patched the black screen issue that was plaguing gamers across the world. And if you thought that was weird, how about a gaming mouse claiming to have infinite battery life? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that on Meta PCs News where we break down the tech headlines into tiny pre-chewed little bird morsels so they're easier to digest. I'm Zach, your mama bird, let's eat. The, oh wow, it's almost like we called this. GeForce RTX 5070 is now confirmed for a March 5th launch with the RX 9070 from Radeon arriving at the same price the next day. Sneaky, sneaky NVIDIA, sneaky, sneaky. Radeon RX 9070 announcement was among the most discussed AMD events on videocards.net. AMD's RX 9070 non-XT will be exactly the same price as the RTX 5070 non-TI. These are cards where you're on a little bit of a tighter budget, maybe you got a little wiggle room to go. It's meant to replace that line, so current gen coming out now. For NVIDIA fans, the choice is much simpler between the RTX 5070 and the 5070 Ti. So if you're making the decision, do I go 5070, do I go Ti? It's a $200 more expensive card to go to the Ti version. For AMD, the gap is so small that once you include shipping, maybe you'll think twice about whether the XT version isn't worth the extra money. $50 a $50 lot of so 50 much. bucks, man. A lot of people are saying, okay, there's a 9070, woo, great. Um, but the XT is really what people have their eyes on right now. Let's get to the details. I wanna talk about specs. 9070 versus 5070. AMD, Nvidia, what are the differences? If you look here at the boost clock, exactly the same on both cards. Big difference on the memory. You've got 16 gigs of GDDR6 on the 9070. You have 12 gigabytes of GDDR7 on the 5070. Some slight differences in the power draw that we've mentioned before. You got 220 watts on the max board power for the 9070. 250 watts for the 5070 on Nvidia's side of things. PCIe 5 across the board, which we already kind of revealed that that was gonna be a thing, so that checks out. Price being the same, what are the differences between these cards? What things should we weigh? One of the biggest things, and we'll get into this uh, a little bit later in another story, is availability is a big, big, big thing. But for now, let's take a look at the differences and comparisons. I did the 9070 and 5070. Let's talk about the XT and the 5070 Ti. You've got 16 gigs of GDDR6 on the XT variant of the new Radeon card. 5070 Ti, 16 gigs, GDDR7. So on the VRAM side, different types of VRAM, amounts being the same. Also, you have slightly different power draw, a little bit more on that XT from the 9070, but all things being equal, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, it's relatively the same on the power draw. NVIDIA basically said, we want faster memory and we'll use the software for everything else. Mm -hmm. Since they're watching this on Friday, that means the reviews are out and we are going to go ahead and read the reviews of the 9070 and the 9070 XT. You oh, take a look? boy, I would love to take a look at this. Check this out. 9070 XT and 9070 reviews are out now. Competition heats up for gamers. Competition heats up for NVIDIA. But I wanted to show you before we get into the details, I wanted to show you some of the other designs that we have. We've got lots of great stuff coming from PowerColor, but check out this, uh, this Yestin. Oh, cool. I set. hate it. We got the Sakura uh, set. Yeah, that's great. I would never uh, never have this in my PC, but I'm sure there's there's something for everybody. Look at what Yeston's done. Those are boobs. <laughs> oh, those are, uh, those are indeed boobs uh, on a graphics card. Wow. Actually, you know what? I, I was, I was kind of memeing on it, but will you open up that middle image there with the white crossover on the card? That kind of kicks ass. Now I think I like anime. Here's the power color cards. <laughs> oh, now here's a here's a red, super vibrant card that we're looking for. Look at what power color has done here, guys. Uh, very nice, very clean. Uh, so that Hellhound white card is kind of what you can expect on this is a 9070 XT, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, beautiful. You've got your white and black variants. But let's actually now change lanes and let's talk about performance. So 4K. Uh, take a look at the 9070 XT. This is the XFX card. It's coming in at 71, almost 72 on average for FPS. You compare that to the Power Color card, about 70. It's all relatively in the same realm. Uh, and then compared to the 9070, so you can kind of see what the difference is between these two new card releases 65 average FPS with a minimum of 55. The big comparisons here are going to be your 5070 to the 9070 and the XT for that matter. Let's move on to Horizon Zero Dawn. This is where we get the real kind of shocking stuff. Cause take a look at who's in number one. AMD, Radeon. AMD is in number one with the XFX card at 102. Wow. 
great job. Let's go to FSR and uh, all the, you know, frame gen and stuff. Now here, we're getting 287 with frame gen and FSR 4 for the 9070 XT, which is faster by, by 10 frames than the 5080. And when we're talking 5070 Ti, we're talking almost 60 frames wow, more. Wow, bonkers. Dude, AMD crushed it with this. F124, uh, the Formula One, remember? <laughs> It's a racing game, I know that now. Yeah, we're seeing a difference of only 12 FPS between the 5080, and then as we jump up to DLSS, we're seeing that 9070 XT once again trounce every card, coming in at 235 FPS. Uh, so the last one in here is Cyberpunk. Which is a NVIDIA godsend of a game because yes. it uses all the DLSS, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing the 4080 take over the 5070 Ti Prime at uh, 29.56. This is pure rasterization. And then on third place, we got the 9070 XT at 26 frames, only three below the 4080, and so only two below the 50. Ray CI. tracing ultra, 4K. Yep. Incredible. Now let's go into the most convoluted chart I've ever seen. This is DLSS, XESS, FSR, and we're also including one, two, and or two, three, and four times frame gen with the NVIDIA. Uh, so I think it's a little skewed towards NVIDIA because the 5080 is pulling four AI frames in between each frame to hit the 208 frames. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing the 9070 XT at 106. Still very, very impressive. Definitely. For the MSRP, and we joke that MSRP means nothing because it doesn't right now. But if you just take those numbers and you line it up, this is a great value card. Zach, they did some overclocking. Ooh. And they didn't do anything that you can't do at home with just drivers. Mm. So the Power Color Reaper Radeon comes with the Adrenaline Edition drivers, which lets you boost that up a little bit. Oh, cool. And they didn't show us games. They show us one game and one benchmark. If we look at Assassin's Creed, uh, we've got the 5080 rocking 106, and then right underneath it. Wow. The old 9070 XT overclock trick, eh? <laughs> 600 bucks on one of these cards. Dude, all day long. This there's It's a hard argument to make not to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's such a good value. You're getting great performance out of it. This overclock card's performing great. I think AMD hit it out of the park with this release. It wouldn't be a $549 price comparison if we didn't take a deeper look at the RTX 5070. Now check this out, this is the Founders Edition RTX 5070, great looking card. They did awesome on these Founders Edition cards. I'm a big fan of how they look. The big problem is, and this is gonna be a recurring theme in this segment, is availability and price. What does it all mean? NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Founders Edition has a big hole to fill. This will be the first true mainstream offering for the Blackwell RTX 50 series GPUs. It takes over from the 4070 with the same $549 base MSRP. Now, what does MSRP mean now? Nothing. Nothing. It means nothing. You're seeing prices all over the place. The likelihood of you getting one of those for MSRP, especially right now, is lower than ever. I would take that $549 with the biggest grain of salt available. So it's got the same amount of VRAM as the 4070, this new 5070 card, but with new Blackwell features. This is gonna be the big focus of this card when people are saying, why would I get a 5070 over a 4070? It has a lot to do with some of these Blackwell features, ray tracing, a lot of this stuff. Getting a faster GPU for less money with new features should make this one of the best graphics cards, but there are some concerns. Spoiler alert, the biggest concern is availability and pricing. From what we've seen, every GPU launch in the past months sell out almost instantly. The ARC card came out, the B580, we loved it. We, we put in a big PO for a bunch of them. In December, we still don't have them. And a lot of people that are looking to build their own PCs are experiencing the same thing, whether it's an ARC card, NVIDIA card, or even AMD right now. Where are these cards going? Cause like, do we have more gamers now? Like, are they making less? Like, why are these so scarce? If you live in tech news, like I know a lot of you guys do, I do as well. You're like, hey, how, how come they can't just make more? What's going on? Let me give you some data. Stay with me here. NVIDIA posted record earnings of $130 billion recently on their most recent fiscal year. That is more than double of the previous earnings. So where's all this coming from? Nearly all of the games come from AI and data center business, which accounted for 88% of that revenue. So what about gaming? How much is NVIDIA making on gaming? Used to be most of their revenue, but now, it's a very, very distant second place at just 8.6% of total revenue. NVIDIA has said 
It's no longer primarily a gaming company and these financials kind of spell that out. So if you're thinking, when you live in this, you're like, just make more cards. You're a gaming company for gamers. That ain't their main business or their main focus. What if GeForce spun off into a separate company? I'd love that. So they could focus on the gamer market segment a little bit more because Nvidia itself is always gonna sh serve shareholders first. That's Zach, just is it gonna happen? No. Let's look at some of the benchmarks and testing. This is a 1440p raster Jason set on Ultra. 4070, you've got an average and lows here. We're gonna go with the averages of 67.5 FPS on Ultra rasterization, 1440p. Now, where's our 5070 Founders Edition? 80, touch over 80 FPS. So you do get a solid boost, but that again is pure rasterization that we're talking about here. A decent boost, but where it supposedly really shines is when it comes to ray tracing. I'm seeing improvements in some areas and really it's like RAM is really in mm -hmm. a couple cores, mm -hmm. but ultimately what I'm seeing is software improvements with the 50 series. Uh, we've got the 5070 Founders Edition coming in at nearly 70 FPS. This is the average, uh, but the 4070, about 10 frames less. So it really does shine when it comes to some of these software-based technologies. So when you're seeing the actual specs, you're going, "This is this the same card? Kind of. Hey Zach, you remember the black screen issues that we had a little while back? Uh, I think that they rolled out an update. They did. They rolled out a solo update uh, for the black screen updates, but we will assume that that fix will also be available when the 5070 is released uh, with the drivers that would come with that card. So it should be more widely available to everybody through the official NVIDIA driver push through the app. Great job, NVIDIA. You're fixing the problem you made. You know who doesn't make dubious claims online? Who? Oh, I think I know. You know who actually backs up everything they say? Who could it be? I think it's a beautiful company called MetaPCs. MetaPCs, it's time for an ad. My goodness, you guys have been buying the crap out of these mouse mats. In fact, I feel like we're selling so many of them that they're raining from the sky. <laughs> Geez, that nearly killed me. Listen, the MetaPCs HyperBeast mouse mats are available now on Amazon. All you gotta do is look up MetaPCs HyperBeast, white, full color, black and gray, and these would look awesome with a brand new PC, which are available now at metapcs.com. We have ready to ship builds, we've got the 50 series cards, new AMD stuff, listen. All you gotta do is go to metapcs.com, either configure a PC from the ground up, or get a ready to ship build. What does ready to ship mean? It's ready to ship. You nailed it. Speaking of ready to ship PCs, I actually got a little news from a little birdie that says we're gonna have two one-off ready to ship PCs Ooh. very, very soon that people should probably check the website every single day for. Do you oh, wanna see one? I would love to see one. This is a BTF build. Uh, it is stacked with a gorgeous Asus Tough 5080, and it is made to look stunning and floaty. This case looks like a Founders Edition card in and of itself. Great job, Fantex, we love you so much. Love this build and we have some hitting the site, no? Yep, we've got one white and one black and they're gonna show up just at a random time. So you're gonna have to check every single day if you do wanna pick this up. We are not gonna be making more RTSs of this, but we will have the case in stock for custom configurated builds. I love it. What about more entry level? AMD cards. So we're kind of working our way backwards, as you can tell with these releases. You start 5090, 5080, 5070 Ti. What about the 9060? Well, check this out. AMD is not slowing down anytime soon because the RTX 9, excuse me, I hate that they did this. The RX 9060 from Radeon is uh, confirmed in Q2. Not too long ago, AMD held two events for the Radeon RX 9070 series. Now at the very end, whoop, oh, they buried a little nugget in there at the end of the presentation. And in the second quarter of this year, we'll broaden the family even further with the RX 9060 products, which we'll tell you more about later. A person representing AMD confirmed that the Radeon RX 9060 series will be coming next. And here we go, gamers won't have to wait as long as they typically do for AMD to launch its next gen GPUs, the RX 90 series, 9060 series. Presumably based on the Navi 44 GPU would compete with the RTX 5060 Ti and the RTX 5060, which are launching in April. So they're trying to get ahead of this NVIDIA launch by saying, look, maybe we can kick this card out 
a little bit sooner. Uh, one should expect sub 200 watt GPU designs and sub $400 cards. Now we're getting into the more budget range that the real budget gamers are looking for. So I'm really interested in this. Perhaps AMD is gonna undercut Nvidia once again, assuming that it will be the green team that launches the card first. Now these are all rumors, aren't they? Yeah, we got, we got no specs on the 5060. They haven't released anything. But for right now, all we can know is, hey, we're going to get cheaper cards and possibly more available cards. Yes, we need it. You know what? Let's get away from reality. Oh, reality is just boring. I, I hate it. Let's talk about marketing reality. Oh, no, I hate it even more. Angry Meow claims that this new gaming mouse offers infinite battery. What do you think about that, Zach? I think that's how. So we're claiming that there is a mouse now, and this is Angry Mayo? Mio? Meow? Meow. <laughs> there is a mouse that could be a uh, infinite battery. And what they mean by that is instant charging. 1.2 seconds to charge this mouse. So very interesting. This was uh, created and funded through a Kickstarter campaign. However, the explainer missed its advertised 20, February 26th reveal. You gotta wait till March 10th for some of the important information. So we're gonna be coming back around to this next week. How is this an infinite battery mouse? My best guess is that that 1.2 second charge, they've got an array of capacitors that are quick charging, and then those either power the mouse or they trickle charge a lithium battery. It's a cool marketing term. My hope would be, yes, you're leading with battery life, but is it a good mouse? That's what we need to know. We're gonna find out on the 10th when they release more information. Oh, this is the Radeon RX 9070 XT Nitro Plus. 16 pin power connector confirmed. That is a big card. That is a big beefy card. That is a fat card. That Look looks that. like a prison fence. That does, yeah, you're not getting out of there. It's confirmed to have a single 16 pin power <laughs> connector. Whoa, Sorry. Phil just died. <laughs> We've killed Phil. <laughs> I'm allergic to good news. He's allergic to good news. We've been covering so much bad stuff here. AMD is leveraging the fact that most RX 9070 cards rely on the older standard as a selling point, especially given the recent reports of overheating connectors on the 5090 cards. Clearly some board partners are tired of using a triple eight pin layout on their cards. Competition is strong for the most attractive and easiest to set up GPU designs. Hence, right. a single freaking connector. Now what I love about this, and you can see this in this image here, and this is so intuitive, it makes so much sense. Thank you, Sapphire. You can actually hide your power connectors and all the cables coming to your graphics card through this little shroud. Look at this. It's a magnetic shroud, so it literally just snaps right on. Why do we have to wait for AMD to come up with this? Like, this is a beautiful design. We could have been doing this all along and said, we've had our power connectors sitting out in the front facing us. So this is a great design idea. And of course, AMD, they're scrappy right now. They want to win on the GPU side and things like this, I think really do add a lot of value to people that value how their system looks in the cosmetic side. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for the news today. Thank you so much for watching. Now I have a few things that I have to remind you of, otherwise I'll get in huge trouble. You need to hit subscribe because I've noticed many of you are not subscribed, which really hurts my feelings. And make sure you hit like on the video too. Maybe leave a little comment. Tell me where you're uh, commenting from. We got people all over the place. I went to Micro Center in Texas last week. Guy came up, he's like, hey man, uh, Sorry, I'm not subscribed. And I made him pull out his phone and subscribe right on the spot. And I'm gonna come to your house and do the same thing if you don't do it, okay? We're watching you. I see you.